Hello, Keith Rock here at VengeMachinery.org. Got a quick lathe project I uh, need to do out here at the museum today. Uh, we're working on getting our steam locomotive put back together. Uh, boiler came back in and uh, uh, they've got a crew out here working on kind of doing that part of the job. But they called me up and asked me if I could uh, make one of these bolts right here. And this is a special bolt uh, that's made to hold the reversing lever or Johnson bars that sometimes calls for the reversing gear to be able to change the valve positions on the steam engines to either make the locomotive go forward or backwards and also to adjust the valves uh, for uh, running uh, on the line or what have you. Uh, and this is just basically a pivot point that this whole lever uh, goes back and forth on. And the one that was on there, this is, uh, I'm assuming the original, uh, it's, it's seen its better days. Uh, let me zoom you in here and I'll show you a couple of the issues with this one and why we're wanting to replace it. So here's the original bolt and if you look at it, the head on it has got multiple issues. Uh, and the biggest thing is, and I actually took this off and my wrench kept slipping off. I'm like what in the world is going on? If you look right here, this whole uh, flat here is at an angle where they, the, these two faces were either worn down or ground down, I'm not sure which. There's no real reason for it to be ground down. I think you can see it right there where the top of that is at an angle going down. Um, there's no real reason for it to be ground down. There's plenty of clearance in there, uh, at least in this current uh, way we had things set up. Now, years ago, it may not have had some clearance there. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was, like I said, really difficult to get a wrench stay on there. This is inch and five-eighths hex. Uh, when you can find some original material, but it's all boogered up all the way around. That's number one. Number two, if you look right in here, this is steel, this is bronze. Uh, evidently at some point in time, this uh, bolt had become so worn that somebody brazed it up and returned it. This thing is just totally out of round. It's not true. I can measure it. It measures anywhere from it's supposed to be an inch and an eighth in diameter, best I can tell. And it ranges anywhere from an inch hundred thousandths to an inch hundred and fifty thousandths. So it's about a fifty thousandths out of round all the way around this thing. So anyway, no big deal. We're just gonna make a new one. Uh, I've got some inch and five eighths inch hex that we're gonna make this out of. We could have done this out of some round and just milled the, the hex on there, but um, we were able to, get our hands on this pretty easily. A uh, local shop had some in stock and they just basically gave us some. So anyway, that's what we're gonna make it from. So let's get in here and get it done. All right, we got it in the lathe here. I've just got this bound in my three jaw chuck. Uh, since it's a hex sided, three, three jaw self-centering is gonna be the way to go here. Uh, and we'll start by facing this off. And we're going to turn that down to an inch and an eighth diameter, that length, and then we'll put the threads on there. It should be a fairly straightforward um, lathe job. Faced off. See the length on this is two and seven eighths. It's not real critical. Uh, I'm just going to go in here and we'll make us a mark on here for how deep we want to turn that. And go in here and touch off on the hex. our first pass down through here. Put a little blue on there. I was getting off that insert I had in there and 
got looking at it, it looked like it was getting kind of dull. So I went and grabbed uh, some of these little Seco inserts. You can't see that. I get another shot of it uh, that Dennis Nolan gave me. I put in that TP2501. Of course, that's a CNMG. And I'm really impressed with how this thing's cut and then even more impressed with the finish that it's giving. Uh, make it a really nice cut. So uh, anyway, that's the first time I've used one of those inserts, uh, but I'm impressed so far with what I've seen. You get a measurement. All right, so we've got about 85 thousandths to take off of there. I'm gonna do a 60 thousandths uh, total, be 30 thousandths cut. And uh, we'll sneak up on that measurement. Lighter cut's not giving quite the same finish as the heavier cut. That's not unusual. Still probably gonna be a, just fine. right on the money. I know you probably can't see that. If anything, we're maybe a half thousandths over. And uh, I'll probably just take some emery cloth and polish that a little bit when we get to the end. But for now, it's good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and face off the bottom of that. Uh, make sure we got a good square bottom all the way down. coming along now I want to cut the step down here this is a one inch eight thread so we need to turn that down to one inch uh, need 125 to come off I've got a hundred thousandths uh, dialed in right now and I've got a mark on here how deep I need to go so under one inch. That'll be good. Next thing I want to do, next thing I want to do, if you look, there's a little, uh, little leaf back here. I've just got a little grooving tool in here. Uh, that's going down to 100, or excuse me, 825 thousandths uh, diameter, so that needs to go in about a 175 thousandths. Uh, I'm just going to whittle it out here. zero out here so I know about how far I need to go. I'm just kind of doing this by hand. about 
ten thousandths and then turn it back out. get in front of the camera. Right, I think that's pretty good. I got my uh, threading tool in here and before I keep going too much, I just want to go ahead and uh, put some uh, Little chamfers on the lead in and lead out of this uh, thread. Oh, I'm here. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly break that corner. I don't want to be chamfer on it. And what the heck? I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Kind of knock the corners off of this uh, hex too while I'm up here. And that's fine. All right, now I'm going to come in here and just kind of touch off on this. Zero my compound. And for thread, I'm going to slow it down just a little bit here. So I'm going to just uh, do a scratch test first. Make sure I'm cutting eight threads per inch. I'm just taking a very light pass. And where I can see, I'm going to take my uh, thread gauge here and verify. I am at eight threads per inch. Very good. And we'll start threading. And if uh, you're interested in threading, I've done a whole video just on threading. You can go look at that. I'm not going to go over all the details here. Um, we're just going to get it done for right now. The uh, boss of this uh, bolts up onto, and I'm just going to do a test fit here. Yeah. I like it. That works just fine. So we've got our uh, bolt in made down here. Everything looks good. They'll go ahead and just kind of lightly polish that. Got it down to measurement uh, right on the money. So what I'm going to do now is take it out. We're going to just cut this off on the uh, bandsaw, and I'll flip this thing around now and face off the top of the uh, bolt. 
We've got about 125 thousandths to face off the front of that. Touch off. Fifteen thousandths to go. I put my dial indicator up here. I can kind of keep track of how far we've gone. thing to do here is just break these corners. The original's done at about a 45. Uh, it's a little steeper and I like it. Um, I'm just going to use my threading tool, I think, and uh, use the angle on there. makes it a little bit softer. I like to break these corners until it's basically just turning all the way around at whatever angle you use. Uh, and that just kind of helps save your knuckles and doesn't have any sharp corners on it. So that'll pretty much be a wrap on making this part. Um, I've got the actual uh, reversing lever here, reversing gear lever, Johnson bar they're often called. And uh, this was the original bolt that goes in here and you can see there's a little bit of play it's it's not terrible uh we put the new one in here um you know this one is made this one here had worn down to about an inch hundred thousandths so it's about 25 thousandths undersized and it wasn't round it was oblong uh the hole here is not perfectly round it's worn a little oblong but it's it's not bad and when i put this in here there's still a little bit of play but it's really not that bad you know, I've been debating on whether I want to bore this out and put a bronze bushing in it, but there's just not a whole lot of material in here to begin with, and I really just think I'm going to leave it like it is. Uh, it needs to have some clearance in there for this thing to rotate on anyway, and, uh, you know, it was this part was working fine. It's just that it's, it wasn't right, and it had issues, and since we had the part, we're going to take it. We were just going to make a new part here, but I think we're going to leave that like it is. So this is ready to go back home. So with that, it'll be a wrap. Thanks for watching guys. And uh, we'll be back with you real soon. Thanks.